Hello, welcome to your tutorial on creating your infographic using Pixlr. Um, I logged in just like you would log in to your Chromebook, just like we've been doing at school. I have a couple of samples of ones that I've created before, this one using circles and a warm color scheme. I did a cooler color scheme using triangles and just having them sort of overlap and interact with each other. And then today I just played with this one, which is just with rectangles. So I'm going to rebuild this one just to go through everything and show you how to start things and how to um, put, pull things into it. So to start with, I'm going to create new because this is a brand new template. Um, the name, if you recall, should be your last name, your first name, underscore info for infographic, huh? See, that's not really my name, I'm joking. And you can capitalize or not capitalize, it's up to you. Um, our dimensions are 3,300 pixels by 2,200 pixels. You can go vertical or horizontal. I've been doing vertical ones, whoops. So I will do a horizontal, woo, a horizontal image this time. So 3,300 3, by 2,200. I am going to put a background in there. Let's see. This time I'm going to work with some greens. I'll go with um, uh, a light green background because I want that to fade into the background. I don't want it to be too bright. Something I've noticed as you guys have been creating these is that you tend to go too bright and then want to know how to change it. So just start a little cooler or a little bit less, you know, dramatic. I use, you can use your mouse or your touchpad to zoom in and zoom out. I have a background color and this, I wanted to draw shapes. I'm starting with shapes just like we did with your cut and paste version. Remember the drawing tool here will take me to shapes. And if you're not sure of what things are, just hover over it. And Pixar does a great job of telling you what each of the different icons open up for you. So I'm gonna go to the drawing tools. I can draw, ooh, ooh, just add things to it. Command Z is undo when you don't like it. Um, but I'm going to start with shapes so that I can get things how I want to arrange on the page. So I'm going to use the rectangular shape. I want to keep it all moving together so it goes together. Maybe I'll just do a darker version of this same color. Make a band across the top and that's going to be my title. Remember the title had to be on top of the page and some way, something, your colors, your shape, something needs to direct the viewer's eye to it. So we know that this is um, a main part, direct my emphasis to that. And I can do other things too, like maybe I want to do, I don't know, just some different lines across the background to kind of mix up the space. You can create shapes and cover them up. Now the cool thing with creating these shapes is that it's all going to be on one layer. If I decide I don't like that or I want to change things up, I want to be able to move these around, you can always add a new layer. I tend to start with empty because, except for when I'm doing text, I tend to start with empty because I can put anything in it. Because now, if I move this, if I want to move these, oops, that's not what I wanted. If I want to move that, I have to go to my move tool or my arrange tool over here. Notice it's going to move all of this stuff together. So if I wanted to be able to move each of these shapes individually, I need to start a new layer each time I add a shape. Now the exception is if I create, let's see, I'm going to go back to my draw tool and make another shape. Drawing, come on, drawing, where are they? Oh, I can only draw on image layers. Good to know. I'm going to add a new layer. I can make it empty too. That works too. Draw my shape. And now I'm going to put a rectangle in here because I'm going to do my four subsections. And here, it's kind of taking over. Can I change my color right there, I believe? No. Once I've drawn it, I cannot. So I think, no, I don't like it. Do I, I, can, I can take the check mark away and get rid of it, or I can just take this, right-click on it, and click the delete layer. Trash that guy. So I would like something different. I'm gonna, what if I went even darker? What if I went here? I don't like that color at all. Let's just trash that layer. Right click, delete. It's got kind of this cooler, minty look. I think I'd rather do something like that. So here I have that. Now, it's pretty dark. I don't want it to overpower my title, but I want it to be a background. I'll probably put white text in there. The other thing I can do is, ooh, I'm on that layer. I'm going to Command Z and undo it. I want new layer. Remember, new layer, empty layer. I'm going to go here. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. Maybe I'll do, I'm going to go like this. 
because just four squares is not as interesting. Whatever you designed is going to be better. But now, on this layer, I can do things with this layer itself, like I can, or I can do things with this as I add it. So if I'm on just this layer on its own, I can right click. Remember blend modes, you could try and make those things different and get some different looks to it where that color goes away entirely and just try different ways of changing it. Sometimes it does a lot. Rah! Sometimes it doesn't do much. Um, but I don't, I don't love these. I'm going none to start with. I'm going to play with my transparency. That's a nice way to make things interact and go together. And I'll do something like that. Now, for my next box, I might go something like this to create the next part over here. And then, had I been, oh, again, new, I always forget this part, I'm do, I want a new layer, new layer, empty, this might be my next subsection, the way it's divided out, and then, had I been smarter, I could look at this, right click on it, I see that my transparency is 53, so it's right about the middle, so if I want to click, right click on that one, maybe I'll bring this down to about 50, 53, somewhere in there too, it doesn't have to be exact, but I can get a similar look there. Now let's just say I don't want these to be level and I missed it. I'll go back over here to my move tool and then I can move things around like push that up a little bit. Maybe I want this to go here. I don't know, something like that. Now I may want to do a similar thing over here so I can I can repeat this. If I want to repeat it, if I'm on this layer, can I duplicate the layer? I can't. I can duplicate the whole layer and it's there, and then I can move this over here, so I have something different, something, the next piece is there. I can also take just this shape and scroll down here a little bit and duplicate just the shape. And then maybe I put this here, and I can change the shape once I do it. If I just pick the corner and go like this, it's going to change the whole shape. If I press and hold shift, nope, it still does it. That's a Photoshop thing you can change the dimensions of the shape. But I might look at this and go, so I have my four boxes. I don't love how they're laying out. I can just delete that guy. I don't like this layer. Am I sure? If I'm not sure, I can just unclick it here, make it go away. And then if I decide I like it later, I can always bring it back. Or I can just do a whole new one. So again, I'm going to add a new layer. Empty. I'm going to make another box. I'm in the arranged part. I need to go back to my drawing tool, rectangle. And then I can divide up, oh, what did I do wrong? I did not change my color right away. Undo. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to go back to this. I'm going to duplicate that layer. And go in my, nope, that is a duplicated layer. Go back to my move tool. Slide this over. I'm going to make it bigger so it fills that space and just have it go off the page. There. See how like little things popped up? Like right there, that purple line tells me this is now central, which is kind of nice, but I don't want it central. I want it lined up. I want to line up with this one or with that one. Now later, I'm going to add a pie chart, a little graphic or something I put in there. So it might, might be a circle down here. So I can go just to kind of add a placeholder. I'm going to add a new layer again, plus new layer. And then I'm going to go back to my brush tool, my shapes, my pen tool. And I want a circle. So maybe I have a little, oh, I want a color. <laughs> Let's see, let's go darker here. So maybe I just, maybe this is just a dot. I'm going to add some information there later. So I can always get rid of these things because, again, I've been making new layers this whole time. I can move things around, make, oh, that's interesting. If I go like that, oh, because it cut off. Huh. I'd probably redo that if I wasn't wanting to get on and show you the next part. I'm going to make this a little bigger so it falls in that spot nicely. Okay, so I have my pieces laid out. Now I want to also have headings for all of these. So as I go here, I can do some more with these shapes. Go back to my rectangle. I'm going consistent rectangles this whole time. I want to choose my color. I have a lot of green. So now maybe I want these headings to have more of an accent color. So maybe I'll go with a bit of blue and see if I add some blue to this. Oh, and I'm still on some transparency here. So I kind of like that, actually. I'm going to go another new... Oh, it's on my background layer. Undo. New layer. And I like all my shapes to be separate. That's why it was transparent. That should tipped me off. Next. Here's the heading for this one. 
Maybe this heading needs to be a little longer. I'm thinking of my plan so that I can make things relate. I'm thinking of like, what were my different headings? How do I need to say these things? This one had less facts, so that's why I'm doing that. Next one, so now each of my pieces, and I like the green kind of sticking out, so I didn't kind of, I didn't fill the whole space with all of them. Now I realize I might want more, so I might go like this. Oh, these were together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There we go. I didn't make a new layer there. So I have these things in here. Maybe now up here I want to do the same thing again just to give this top part emphasis. So I'm playing with layout. I'm play ah. Blue. I want that blue back. I'm playing with layout. I'm playing with emphasis to get all these things to come together. Now, there we go. So I have the layout there. It's not on the right layer. It needs to be its own layer. So I bring this up here. I have all these shapes and things in place. What just happened? I didn't go where I want. I use Command-Z a lot to make things do what I want. Perfect. All right, got my new layers. I have all these things here I can play with and move these in. Now I want to start to add some text. So I go to the text tool, and I'm going to create. I can also go down here, do a new layer, new text layer. Look at that. It pops up a little thing for me. I could agree with you, but they would both be wrong. Mm -hmm. It gives it little funny sentences whenever you do that. Now when I'm in the text tool, whoops. Then I can go through here. I want to select my font. Remember, we're looking for a font that goes with your, um, your subject. So like this one doesn't, oh, it's a good, like this is not very techy, that font. Not techy, that one. So maybe if you have sort of an aside, a little fun thing you're adding, it could be as if it's in script. But I would guess for most of you, that's not the kind of thing you're going to be putting in. So I decided when I had to describe the font that I would need, this one, not what I wanted. What was the one? That did they? I think it was that one. So instead of that, I'm going to start typing. I'm going to say technology. Okay, I, I'm on the text tool. Why did it go away? Let's make sure I'm on the right layer over here. I see the text, so I can click in there. And I'm going to write technology can change your life for the better. Now I'm guessing. Maybe not two. This should be more professional than that. I can select this. I'm guessing you're going to have better titles than that that should be more specific to what you have. But now I can change there. I can change line spacing would be if I had multiple lines. So I don't need to worry about that one at all. Let's just leave that zero. Letter spacing, if I want this to fill that whole space across the top, I can play with that a little bit. Background, I can change it. But I already have a background, so I don't want that. Outline, I could give it, ooh, maybe a nice, it's got a blue already. What if I do blue, but I make it like a dark blue to really make it bold? Because that is my heading, remember? So I can do things like that. A shadow. shadow. Oh, see, the shadow makes it like that. Can I make it bigger? That's better. But that's a lot of effects. I would normally not use that many, and I'm probably for sure not going to use that many on any of the other things besides my title. So I got a title in there. Now I go over here, and I could say I want to add a new text layer. I do want to add a new text layer. And it's Look at that. It's already love for all, hatred for none. Mm -hmm. It's already got my font in there. And so now I can say technology. Um, maybe I want to specific on this is improving lives. Talk about new medical, medical technology. In this spot over here, so I put that there. Now you see how this is already looking different because I don't have these different things. Maybe in this one, because it's not my main title, maybe I'm going to add an outline. Let's see, this one have doesn't have the one I used prior. I, I did, it was a blue. Why can't I get blue? I want my blue. So I can go back to something similar there, but I'm not going to do all the other stuff to it. So it kind of, you know doesn't make it too too much. So we know I have that there. I can play with this. And then in this spot here where I'm adding text, here this is hard to read. It's all capitalization. It's all capitalized. It's not very legible that way. I can also just add text in here too, but you don't have to do it in this space. You can do it up there. So let's just say um, medical technological advancements. You're going to have facts and quotes and things that you're going to put in here 
blah, blah, blah. Your ears will be much more interesting. Blah, 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 blah. There you go. See how, that, like, it's too much. It's a title case. So let's go back and let's find a better font for us that will work with this. Now, it's a clean sun serif font. It means it doesn't have these little, like, edges and things. This, see these look how stylized? I want one that looks like it, it should be used for actually like the text itself. See how this one looks more readable? I think that works better, but it's still pretty big. Let's bring down the size. Whoa, not that little. So maybe something like this so that I now have a readable font in there and a readable text in there. This is going to need a little bit of you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll need to return in there so it fits more nicely. And then I'll fit it on here. So maybe in this space, I have, whoa, look at that. I can change the, let's undo that. Um, I can change that. So I've started to lay out, I can tell which fonts are more important. I can tell how this is, you know, I'm using the white against the dark background. So I would fill in all these different parts. Now, don't forget from time to time to click save. And when you do that, again, always save that your last name, first name, underscore info. It should be a JPEG. We want to use a JPEG quality 100 100 percent perfect we have our pixels our size and it's going to want you to download you can download it to your desktop the key is when you hand this in just like all the other stuff you've handed in for me you're going to hand it in in your google drive literacy folder so that i can see it and grade it for you i have uploaded the rubric for you um, the one thing that i noticed as i was going through i tried quite a bit to find images and icons that you could put in, and Pixar does not make that easy. So I'm going to take that requirement out as we're doing this because I realized it just kind of gets complex because even when you take something, it'll always import it with this background. Even when you take something transparent, then you get this checkerboard background. It doesn't look good. So I'm going to take out the icons and play with it some more until I find something I like and make it easy to do for you guys. The one thing I did find is I went through and I looked in like tech backgrounds and I found this guy, which I thought was pretty fun. And then I added him. Where's Pixar? There we go. So there we go. Close. Done. Saving for now. And I can still add to this, but I also found that I could. I'm going to go here. If I wanted to bring something else in, I have this tech symbols icon. I'm going to, let's crop it so it's just the text symbols. And there we go. Get the white out of there. Enter. Oh, it didn't get all the way up. Well, we'll pretend because I don't want to take too long, too much of your time. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I can select part of this, or I can actually open this. So let's save this. We'll call it text symbol 2. Actually, it was just it's just one. There was one. Text symbol one. There we go. And that is here. So now if I open this, I wonder if that's saved to my desktop as I'm hoping. There's text symbol one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. If I go here, I'm in my student side. I'm in here. Save image. Thank you. I did. I'm going to go to my home. And I'm, oh. Can I open that? Open image. No, it's not in there. But if I have an image saved to your desktop or to a folder, I can go back and save, find that image. This is not here. I think it's in my, here? I put this in my visual literacy folder. There we go. Of course, it's not there. Uh, <laughs> well, that would be helpful if I knew where that was. How about in my downloads? Is it there? Text symbol one. Ah, it's in my download. I want to add it to my current image. So, oh, I have the wrong one open. How about I open this one and say add it to my current image? So, file, open image, find the image on my laptop or on your Chromebook. I'm going to add to my current image, and here it is. Now, it's totally big and overwhelming. It's black. It's this black thing. I could make this a little icon somewhere, or I could do something like this, stretch it, because it's a pretty large image, and then um, I'm going to put it all the way across this whole thing, and I can't talk right now. Um, I'm going to change it so it's like super 
right click on this so it's super transparent. So it's kind of there, but look, it's like, oh, it's too much. But I could move it. There we go. It makes it this one. I'm going to move it underneath, like, all my headers and things. Where'd it go? Is this it? That's not it. Sometimes you got to just open and close things. There it is. So I'm going to move it underneath all of these. And then as I add other layers to it, there. So you can see those are on top of it. So now these things stand on top, and I can add some sort of, like, the design is sort of faded in the background. I'm going to go even... It's hard to see over here. It's this one, right? No, this one. I'm going to go even more faded. Just because I, I like that it gives it a little bit. I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom. So it fills that whole back thing. And then whenever I add this text, you can see the text is on top of it. So you can move your layers around to make things stand out. So if you want to have some sort of image or texture in the background, that's an option for you. These are all just different things you can do with your text, your shapes, your things like that to make it interesting. This is due Thursday at 3 p.m. It should be fun homework, fun people. So play, see what you can add to it. My name's not really Bernie Sanders. I know I was just trying to think of a different name that's not mine because it's more exciting. So there you go. Have fun. Play. My office hours are from 10 to 12 on Thursday, or please email me in the meantime to my student email account. If you have any other questions, I am happy to help you. Thank you. Good luck. Bye.